What is going on, guys? Welcome to Gregel's TV Daily Rewind. So we go back and we can give you the past seven days of tech news stories in one single video. And I'm recording this like I shouldn't be. It's obviously vertical instead of horizontal. I'm recording it with the front camera of the Galaxy Z Fold 3, the one on the big display, the awful one. And I have like no lights on, but I just thought it'd be like, let's just show you how crappy it looks. I, what I wanted to tell you though, guys, is craziness. This week was absolute craziness with the GOS fiasco, with it throttling the speed and performance of Galaxy phones, with the new Apple stuff coming out, how Samsung has confirmed the death of the Note officially, and so much more. So enjoy this week, guys. Hope you have a great week, a great one, and we'll see you in the next one. First story of the day is crazy fast charging. Like, so fast, it's scary. And it's coming from Oppo and OnePlus, and it'll arrive in the second half of 2022, 150 watt charging. Let's talk about, with a 4,500 milliamp battery, you can charge to 50%, one to 50% in five minutes. And then if you do it in 15 minutes, it's all the way up to 100%. So a full charge, zero to 100 in 15 minutes. It's absolutely ridiculous. And the technology is literally months away from being released so that you can use it on OnePlus and Oppo phones. And it's going to make, I know getting better battery life is probably the more important thing, but if you can't achieve that, this is the next best thing. And this has some bio uh, electrolyte type technology in it that not only self heals the battery, but it's gonna be long-term good use, charging super fast, and it's coming out really, really soon. And the chargers, like I said, are much smaller. So awesome stuff. I can't wait to see this come to more and more phones. Next up is about the Galaxy S22 Ultra and the Note Ultra or the Note phones. So I know some of you think that the Note's gonna come out. You've heard these rumors that the Note is still coming back and it, the S22 Ultra is not the full replacement. Well, you got some good news and bad news depending upon how you look at it. And it looks like the Note is dead for Ever. And we know this because news that's coming out of MWC, and this is coming from a Korean news site where it says that uh, the president of Samsung, Ro Tao Moon, Galaxy Note will come out as an ultra in the future. Now that's kind of confusing, but when you read through the article, it says Samsung's electronics flagship smartphone, Galaxy Note, will be replaced with ultra models of the Galaxy S series, meaning that the replacement is the Galaxy S. Um, ultra series. The Rautau Moon says head of Samsung Electronics Mobile Experience Business Division met with reporters prior to visiting Samsung Electronics booth at the MWC 2022 event held in Barcelona, Spain on the 28th and said that the Galaxy Note uh, be it will come out as Ultra and that the Ultra, the S22 Ultra model released this month by Samsung succeeded the flagship smartphone Galaxy Note in the second half of the year, including an S Pen in the future. The Note will be discontinued and the S Ultra model will be integrated with the Galaxy Note. So the article is written a little bit weird because it's translated from Korean to English. So it's not a perfect translation. It's Google doing its translation business. So that's why it read, reads a little bit weird until you get to that final paragraph where it says, Galaxy Note's dead. It's been replaced by the S22 Ultra and will be for the future as well. So it's still an S22 Ultra is literally a Note phone with a different name. So don't get bothered by that. But it is right there. It's in plain sight. We've heard it before. And now this just adds further confirmation to that. Then I have to grab my phone. Why? Because it's a tip and trick. So the first thing you want to do, grab your phone, obviously, swipe up, go to the Galaxy Store. Once you're in the Galaxy Store, you want to go in to menu at the bottom there and then click updates. And we're looking for an update to Galaxy uh, Samsung Notes. There we go. It's right here. I'm just going to tap on, I know I have a bunch of other updates, but I'm just going to update this one specifically because it has to do with this one. So it's updating right now. Once it's done being downloaded and installed, swipe down from the top. You want to go to the very end of all your quick toggles, just swipe all the way over, hit the plus sign, and you're going to have one, if you don't already, that says create note. Just tap it, bring it down here, I should say. Click and drag it down. Once you're done, hit done. And now, when we go to our quick toggles, swipe down, 
Mine's on my last page. All I'm gonna do is tap on it and it instantly goes into the screen to create a note for yourself so that you're ready to go and write the note and do whatever you need to do to do that. Quick little toggle, quick little trick. There you guys go. Next up is a deal for the Galaxy Tab S8 and S8 Plus on Amazon. It's linked down below and you can save up to $75 with a coupon clipped on that they allow you to, to clip. And then they also give you up to a $75 gift card. So basically it's like $150 savings if you look at it like that. And what ends up happening is you can get the Galaxy Tab S8, you can get that with a $50 coupon and a $50 gift card. Or if you get the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus, you can get a $75 gift card and a $75 coupon. So it's available right now. It even ships, like I looked at the these, they ship as early as tomorrow or arrive as early as tomorrow. So you can get these things really, really quick on Amazon. So if you've been holding back on the Tab S8 and S8 Plus, now's the time, perfect time to jump on it, especially through Amazon with those coupons and gift cards. Next up is all about the Galaxy S22, 22 Plus and S22 Ultra. As you know, it has new glass on there to protect it. It's supposed to be a little bit more durable. Well, it seems like it's not based off some tests that Allstate did. Allstate is a insurance provider, but they also, I guess, provide insurance for your devices as well. And it's not looking too good for these phones, especially if you do not have a case. I totally recommend getting a case. I'm digging these cases right here from VRS. I did videos on them. I'm actually using this one. It's green, very rugged, very easy to put on as well. You also got your case born cases. I'll put the rugged one for that as well. I feel like you probably don't need anything more than a really, really good case to protect your phone. But if you're using it naked or with a very thin case, this study is gonna show you something. So first of all, this is a there's a video on this, so I'll link the video down below if you wanna watch it. But basically, I just grabbed some screenshots from it showing that dropping it face down, the S22 will have shattered glass, or sh will shatter and have loose glass on there, so that's no good. S22 Plus, and this is when they're naked, remember. Uh, cracked glass, shattered corners, and loose glass when it's face down. Next up, you have the S22 Ultra, which also had shattered and loose glass, which is unfortunate. <laughs> then you jump into this dropping it back down, uh, and it had the S22 had shattered glass, loose glass, and cameras were intact though, which was nice. Then you have the S22 Plus, which had, again, shattered glass, loose glass, but cameras were still intact. Then we have the S22 Ultra, which had shattered glass, loose glass and cameras again were intact. And then to add on to the S22 Ultra, it says the new curved edge of the S22 Ultra also made it vulnerable to cracking when dropped, when dropped on its side. Scary stuff, guys. And then to finish up all this stuff, it says design upgrades, durability downgrades. At $799, $999, cases and screen protectors are highly recommended. I mean, that's kind of true of almost any phone. You'd probably want to get at least a case on there, if not a glass protector. I'm in the camp of if you get a nice rugged case and it protects it quite well, you should be absolutely fine with a case and no glass screen protector, especially on a non-folding phone, even with a folding phone, really. But definitely get a case without a doubt, guys. You're playing with fire by not doing it, but unless you're okay with waiting a little bit to get it fixed or paying to get it fixed, whatever the case is, you'll be okay naked, but otherwise I would totally recommend at least a nice case. And then if you wanna add a step further, you could always add the glass. You guys are gonna ask me what glass protector I use. I don't use one. Um, if you want one, the only ones I personally even know about in the, in the stratosphere are really usually the white stone dome glass, which I'll also link down below. So check those out. First story of the day is about the Pixel Watch, guys. If you're excited about the Pixel Watch, We've got some more information, and in some ways, it's actually better than the Samsung Galaxy Watch. So check this out. So this information is coming from Android Police via Max Weinbeck over there, saying that the Google Pixel Watch pops up alongside Pixel 6a in carrier inventory system. When we pull into that little piece, basically what it says is that the database shows that the device will be sold in three colors, gray, black, and gold. And according to the info, it will come with 32 gigs of storage, which is double the Galaxy Watch 4's capacity and matches the Apple Watch for the most storage that you can get on a smartwatch. The carrier is also yet to sell a non-cellular watch. So right now, they only are gonna have cellular versions of the watch, at least. I mean, they'll have a non-cellular version, but ultimately, 
if you want to get the Pixel Watch when it comes out, probably within the next couple months, I would assume, or a few months, uh, you'll be able to get it, probably more than a few months, probably like five months or so, you should be able to get it in cellular version, which is great news if you want that. And then you should also be able to get Wi-Fi version. Speaking of Pixel products, here's what potentially the Pixel 7 Pro could look like based off of some design elements of the Pixel 6 and then some leaks of the Pixel 7 showing off the different camera, slightly different camera versus last generation, squared off edges, squared off design, big kind of flat display for the most part. And again, it's really the big difference though is still that you're going to potentially get a new camera design on the back of the new Pixel 7 Pro. And this again, won't even be out until October of 2022. So you're still looking at basically eight, nine months away. Another new product that'll be coming out in the near future, 2023 more, more so is the Apple AR VR mixed reality headset. So it's virtual reality, augmented reality. And these are product renders show on Apple mixed reality headset in development, a high end standalone headset with numerous cameras for VR and AR applications. And it's kind of crazy. I, I, using this in AR would be a little bit weird because it looks like it's, and, unless it's gonna be different, it's got that, you know, the black shaded screen and you think like, am I gonna be able to see through that? Especially if it's AR, I mean, v, yeah, AR augmented reality to it. Just a kind of interesting look to it, but something I'm very, very much looking forward to are these kind of headsets to consume my media, consume my gaming, consume everything that I do on here. I'm very, very much looking forward to this. And it's probably gonna be very expensive, especially if it's from Apple. Next up is about the Galaxy Z Fold 4. Recently, we've heard that the Galaxy Z Fold 4 would have a built-in S Pen. And today, there's a story going around and it's saying, hey, hold up, don't jump on that so fast that that's not a locked-in feature for the Galaxy Z Fold 4. So based off of this article, when you kind of go through it, it basically mentions that the S Pen uh, has been installed in the Z Fold 4 from overseas and some domestic sources for a while now. They said it was confirmed, but that's not true. The sample is clearly present, uh, clearly presents issues to be resolved, such as the internal hinge mechanism and battery are not yet complete. The sample has gone into full review again and the next uh, we're preparing for testing. If it does go through internal standards and time condition, the loading will be, I don't know what Jordan Steele. I think that's, a, it's converted from Korean, I believe. But ultimately, it's saying, hold your horses. It's not a locked in feature yet. They're still testing it out. It might not happen, but as more time rolls around, I'll let you guys know. But I mean, it's kind of going back and forth at this point. So we'll see what happens. Next up is about an app that's installed on all Samsung phones that limits performance of games and apps on your phone. And it's been happening since the Galaxy S7 slash Note 7. It's kind of wild and let's just talk about it because if it builds into something big, then you'll, this will be one of the first places you probably heard about this story. So Samsung created an app, this is per uh, Gary Yon Han. Samsung created an app called GOS and used the app to limit game performance, making the gaming experience worse. However, according to what the Korean community found out today, Samsung confirmed that it has put performance limits on more than 10,000 apps. And there's like a big long list of apps that it affects. So it's not just games, it's regular apps as well, such as Microsoft Office and Chrome and other apps as well. And it says, you know, more information that comes from this is that Samsung employees are also criticizing this as bad behavior, referring to Volkswagen Dieselgate. According, Samsung has launched an investigation and there are rumors that Samsung's vice chairman, Lee Jae Young, is also moving on. And it's just a wild story that this is a thing that's even going on. And like I said, it's been happening since the Note 7 days slash S7 days. And it's funny because like, I don't know how much they're limiting the performance because my phone still, still runs freaking pretty well. I mean, sometimes I'll grab like a OnePlus phone when I do a video on it or something like that, or even a Pixel phone, I'm like, whoa, this phone feels faster or snappier. So maybe that's the difference. The GOS is slowing something down or eventually slowing it down. It's kind of weird, but it's something to know. And it's something that supposedly is going on right now. We'll have to keep our eye on this to see what happens from this and that there's an internal investigation at Samsung about this, supposedly. So. I don't know, we'll talk about this as time goes on. We only have one story today, but it seemingly is a update to what was said yesterday. 
and there's some kind of resolution to it all. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Samsung has this app called GOS, at least that's what it's abbreviated to. And what that means is it's a gaming optimization service. And Samsung, ultimately yesterday, what we found out is that Samsung created an app called GOS and they've had it for a while, used the app to limit game performance. However, they also used, uh, uh, used it to make the gaming experience worse. However, again, onto that, according to what Korean community found out, Samsung confirmed that it has put performance limits on more than 10,000 apps. So not only were they limited in game performance, they're also limiting uh, 10,000 apps. Now it's seemingly they put out this official statement. Now this is pulled by Gary again. I think he's translating this from uh, Korean to English and that's why we haven't seen it hit American media outlets just yet. But ultimately they said, seemingly, we would, uh, hello, this is Samsung Electronics. We continue to listen to our customers to expand our users and options and to provide optimal performance. The Samsung Galaxy S22 series GOS game optimizing service is a built-in app that optimizes CPU and GPU performance to prevent excessive overheating during long gameplay. In order to meet the needs of various customers, recently we plan to implement a software update that provides a performance priority option in the Game Booster Lab within the Game Launcher app as soon as possible. We will continue to listen to con uh, consumers' opinions and do our best for customer satisfaction and consumer protection. Thank you, but that doesn't truly answer why it's slowing down apps as well. That's the, the, the bigger thing. I, I do a lot more with apps than I do gaming on my phone, so this affecting me probably isn't that big a deal, especially when I'm playing like word games or uh, jumping game, you know, those little, I can't think of the gold, those stupid little games. I mean, you don't really need gaming performance for those kind of phones. Any phone will pretty much run those games. This doesn't fix every, I mean, it does fix something, but it doesn't because you can't turn on Game Booster for apps. So it seems like limiting performance is going to be a thing that's going to continue within this app. Now, previously, you could use Package Disabler Pro, which was an app, which is an app in that's compatible with Samsung phones that's in the Galaxy Play Store. And when I look for it in the store, I don't see it. It used to be in the Google Play Store. I, for some reason, I'm not seeing it, but it was like a paid app and you could disable apps. And I guess Ice Universe, I can't find his tweet now, but he, he tried to do it and it just wouldn't work. Or it looks like it does, but it doesn't actually disable the app because Samsung overrides that. So unfortunately, it seems like, they're, fortunately, I guess, it seems like they're putting out a software update to give you a fix for that if you want to run your, your phone at optimal performance while gaming. But then it also looks like they're not putting that out for up apps or maybe they will just disable it from apps, who knows. But we'll keep our eye on this big, big story coming out for Samsung phones. It doesn't, I don't believe it's just the S22. I believe it's all Galaxy phones. First story of the day is, is this what the Galaxy S23 might look like? At least, that's what Ice Universe thinks. And when we look at this, you can see that basically it's just a Galaxy S22 or 21 phone with no camera on top of the display. It would be sitting underneath the display, meaning that you would be so in love with this, probably. I mean, the love with the look, at least. The problem with under display cameras is that they potentially don't look good when they take photos. And that's really, really the, the, the hindrance that's dealt a blow to the Galaxy S uh, Z Fold 3 line because that camera on top of the big display, uh, underneath the display I should say, looks crappy. Looks crappy. It's really bad. It's not good at all. I don't like it at all. And I and I and I know it's supposed to be improved this generation, but when and if the S23 gets it, you're looking at it being like a a third generation, fourth generation type camera. And at that point, maybe it would be equal or almost near equal to what you'd get with a camera on top of the display. Obviously, when you look at a Galaxy S line or a Z Fold line, or even the uh, a Note line from the past few years, it hasn't been the same kind of phone that maybe it was years ago. Like it was a phone that had specs beyond anyone's reach. It had uh, features and performance beyond anyone's reach at point times versus other phones and it seems like Samsung has kind of backed away from that strategy and has kind of gone in a different direction and if you look at this tweet from Ice Universe saying that reducing costs and increasing profits is TM Rose 
long-term strategy. He is the head of uh, Samsung. He tries to improve the capabilities of software to save hardware costs. If this is effective, it is a smart way. For example, the S22 Ultra uses software and AI and makes the camera perform better. And I agree with that. Basically getting the same kind of camera hardware for the most part on the S22 Ultra versus the S21 Ultra. But for instance, you can tell the 100X zoom has been improved with AI. In, it, it's because when you look at it before they take a photo, it looks it looks kind of crappy. But then when you take it, you're like, wow, that really, really, the software really improved the, the the photo. So it leads to the question at the end of the day. It's like, is are you guys fine with Samsung putting out good hardware still, but making it a lot better performance, uh, better quality photos, better heat management, better this, better that with software? rather than doing it with hardware. And I, I, I'm not against it, because I think that's what Apple does a lot of the time. When you, when you play with an Apple phone, it doesn't have as much RAM. Um, the camera sensors might not be as many megapixels or seemingly as good hardware, but they still take amazing and then a lot of times better photos and videos. So it's not a bad thing. And it, it's a, it seems like they're going even more into the Apple route of things, which again, I don't think is a bad thing, but I can see why people might look down upon it as we get into the future and maybe the phone's not improving on its RAM and it's not improving on its megapixels and it's not improving on this or that. But when you use it, you're like, oh, this does feel different. That does feel better. Next up is the Samsung GOS controversy story that's been going around. around. Samsung has released another statement, which is a second statement we talked about We've been at the forefront of this. I don't think anyone on YouTube has been covering this as quick as me. So uh, if you're interested in this stuff, I've been covering it basically almost a day before the American media has even started covering it. All due to the fact that we've got some amazing Twitter people out there that are doing some great work out there to get this information out. Without further ado, this is like basically a Q&A that Samsung has put out about the GOS app. So let's talk about it. So Mr. Kim put this tweet out and it's uh, translated from Korean to English, but let's start it off saying additional information regarding the S22 GOS app. Hello, this is Samsung Electronics. We apologize for causing concern over the GOS controversy to customers who have loved, cared for, and supported Samsung Galaxy. We take all matters and point it out by customers seriously and we will do our best to come up with a solution as soon as possible and minimize the inconvenience. I'll explain more what you're curious about. So it says, do you think it's, well, this, this is a question and answer they put up. So do you think it adversely affects the performance of general apps other than games? Is it true? So basically they're saying, are, other, are apps affected by this, not just games? And they said, no, GLS works for product safety such, such as excessive heat when running high-end games and does not work for general apps other than games. They said some claim that when the database in the GOS APK is extracted that there was a list of 10,000 apps. The list is for purpose of quickly determining whether a newly installed app is a game or not and has nothing to do with GOS. Why is there no performance limit in the benchmark tool? And they said the benchmark tool is not a game app so it is not subject to GOS application. Only in the case of game apps there was a part where the temperature was set in a direction that does not increase excessively when using heavy games in consideration of specificity, high GPU, CPU usage, and continuous usability. How much improvement is achieved when the performance priority is applied? And they said when the GPU, CPU performance clock limit is lifted and the terminal control temperature is raised, aka GOS, GOS app is off, and they're saying that the frames per second is improved by about 10 seconds. And we have some information on that because Gary, he's back again. He said, Samsung said 10 frames more in Gen Gen Impact. Are you kidding me? And he shows uh, this, 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 the Galaxy S22 Ultra having only 38 frames per second versus some other phones with similar processors up to 60 frames per second. So basically it sounds like it's more than 10 frames per second when the GOS app is applied that they're cutting performance. When the new improvement plan is applied, is there any problem with safety? He, they said, we plan to secure safety by optimizing the temperature control algorithm, even if we remove CPU, GPU, performance clock limit to improve customer VOC as above. Even if the terminal policy is changed, there is no problem in user safety. There is a function that has been applied since 20, this is a function that has been applied since 2016, but why is there a problem on the S22? They said previously there was a way around it, 
However, part of the bypass route was blocked in the version of One UI 4.0 released in November of 21, and additional blocking was made in version 4.1 of One UI in February of 22. Some of the customers' needs for high-performance gaming environments were overlooked. We're sorry to trouble you with this part. We were reviewing the restoration of the detour route that was blocked this time. There is a claim that free repair due to overheating is not possible. If the performance priority option is applied, is this true? No, the performance priority option is also a feature provided by our company. If there's a problem with the device and it is within warranty period, you can receive free service. To prevent this from reoccurring, we will listen more carefully to the voices of customers and strive for continuous optimization in consideration of the environment of various game users. In addition, we plan to continuously provide the update optimization software, not only for the S22, but also for the existing models. Once again, we apologize for causing concern and thank you for giving us a sharp point. So what does this all lead to? What does it all mean? It means that Samsung has a GOS app that is on the Galaxy S22 series. With the One UI 4.1 software, it has basically powered down in a lot of ways in games. They're saying it doesn't affect apps, even though there's a big long list. They're saying that list is just used for being able to determine if it's an app or a game. But if it is a game, the, this GOS app will take hold and will downgrade the performance of the game. They're saying that they're gonna put an update out so that you can turn this on or off and that it won't do so much, but they'll still have some kind of control so that the phone doesn't overheat on you. So at the end of the day, is it good, is it bad? It's kind of bad, but it's not as bad as maybe we thought it was. But again, as more information comes out about this, I will let you guys know. First story of the day is chargers and cables and all of that stuff that usually comes inside of the box for your phone. If you're a fan of getting the charger in your box, as you know, the flagship phones for Samsung do not come with the charger anymore and neither will their cheap phones. This story is just coming out. So their A series, M series and F series will no longer come with a charger now. You should still get the USB-C cable, but no charging brick. Now you probably already have one, so it's probably not that huge of a deal, but usually when you see cheaper phones, it usually comes with the charger. I mean, I don't have one right near me. Oh, I do. Oh, I can't show you, it's under, <laughs> I'm under NDA. I almost showed you a phone that I'm not supposed to show you. Um, but yeah, that goes to show you that mm, this sucks, kind of sucks. So if you get those, the A series, M series, or F series, these new versions that are coming out will not come with a charging brick. Next up is we've been talking about Samsung's GOS app that optimizes the performance of the phone during gaming periods. And it's starting to trickle down to other companies being upset about the way Samsung has handled this whole GOS app fiasco. And this one, this tweet has been put out by and made official by Geekbench, who puts out gaming performance and just performance of phone benchmarking. And they said earlier this week, we were made aware of Samsung's game optimizing service, GOS, and how it throttles the performance of games and applications. GOS decides to throttle or not to throttle applications using application identifiers and not application behavior. We view this as a form of benchmark manipulation as major benchmark applications, including Geekbench, are not throttled by this service. After extensive internal testing, we have determined that the following Samsung Galaxy headsets use GOS. And they, they put, look at every single model, S22, S21, S20, S10. Today we delisted these handsets from the Android benchmark chart on the Geekbench browser. Whoa, this is pretty big. And what does it mean? It just means that they have a list of like predefined benchmarks for certain phones on their site. They've taken those off. It doesn't mean that the Geekbench app won't work on your phone, it still will. But it just means that they have removed it from their official site, the, 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 the stats of it, uh, of what they've, what they've gathered from it. So. This is pretty, I mean, it's, it's big, but it's not big. Cause I mean, like your mom's not using the Geekbench score saying, where's that score that uh, yeah, Samsung guy? I mean, they're not, they don't have to worry about that. It's just big in that it's starting to trickle down to other places and apps that maybe uh, geek, that, that, that benchmark 
Samsung phones and they're saying that, you know what, this GOS app is more prevalent than what Samsung is really saying. Samsung's really just saying the S22, but they found it in other phones as well and it's how it's manipulating the scores and manipulating the performance overall. Our next story is kind of a scary story in a way. Uh, Samsung has been leaked into, if that makes any sense. They basically got hacked into and it's by a, a group of hackers that also, I guess, hacked into NVIDIA just recently, got a lot of their source code and stuff like that. And here's a little bit of the information. And they're a, a, a group of hackers called Lapsus. And they're saying the Samsung leak is here. New leaking confidential Samsung source code. Our leak from breach includes devices, hardware, which they can get source code for every trusted applet installed on all Samsung devices, trust zone specific code for every type of TOS. This includes DRM modules and key master gatekeeper algorithms for the biometric unlock operations, which means their fingerprint sensors. They have the, all the algorithms for that, including the source code that communicates directly with sensor down to the lowest level. Bootloader source code for all recent Samsung devices, including Knox data and code for authentication. Various other data confidential source code from Qualcomm. There's online services, Samsung's activation service source code for the first time setup. Samsung accounts full source code, including authentication, identity, API services, and many more that wouldn't fit here. Various other data as always enjoy. This is the reason it's scary is because they potentially it's not, from what I am gathering from this, wh whoever has this data and knows how to use the data could get into your phone regardless. It sounds like to, be, by hacking it with software and stuff like that locally, it sounds like it could be non-locally as well. It could come through the internet and things that were, you know, maybe unbeatable or un, un unhackable are now hackable because they've they've got this data. Um, that's why it's scary. And it could, I, I guess it could be fixed as Samsung updates their software and things like that. But ultimately they've gotten to Knox, the biometric data, which again, the fingerprint sensor Knox is their security software. Um, they said they got into their authentication um, setups and things like that. So it's kind of scary. And it, we will keep our eye on this as, as, as it develops. Samsung has not, at least from what at the time of making this story, has not officially put out anything about this yet but if they do i will let you guys know thanks for watching guys your question of the day is what kind of authentication do you use for your phone mostly when you unlock your phone is it the fingerprint sensor is it face unlock is it your code is it a pin code let me know in the comments down below for me it's either face unlock or the fingerprint sensor that's generally what i do the most on my tablet though more times than not, I'm usually just putting in my, um, my, my little code. I do that. And for some reason, it feels a little bit faster than the fingerprint sensor on there. Let me know about you guys. With that said, let's get into the Q&A portion of the video and drop that. First question comes from Tim Grossen, who says that, uh, actually a comment, I purchased the Spigen 45 watt charger and cord you had in one of your video links. It works great, 40 to 100% in 45 minutes. Thank you. There we guys go. I, I'm great. I'm glad. When I talk about stuff, I want you guys to like it. It's stuff that I really like. I love the speaking stuff. I use it on almost every, I have a lot of chargers throughout the house and it's definitely probably about 80% of my chargers that would be maybe 90% of the chargers that we currently use in the house. So good, good stuff. I'll link those chargers down below. And also thank you, uh, Tim, for being a member of this channel. So if you wanna be a member, you'll see like join. If you click that, that's what Tim did. So thanks so much. Ben's Tech Tube says, hey Greg, do you currently have good luck on the game booster modules installed on any or all of your Galaxy devices? Because I had installed both on my Note 20 Ultras. Performance went all to heck, uninstalled them, and my Note 20 Ultra has been fast as now my S22 Ultra. I think all those modules are trash. What do you think? Sorry for the never ending questions no I, I i yes i do have it installed on my phones the the good lock stuff i haven't noticed any slowdown in any of my devices now that's not to say that like i don't think that the s22 ultra is not seemingly faster feeling than this phone it does it feels a little bit snappier but it's it's not it's just you know this one's a little bit older that has a better processor whatever Still, no, but no, I haven't felt any slowdown or anything like that. Trollboy says, noob question. I ordered a 45 watt anchor charger and they sent me 65 watt brick. Is it okay if I use it for my S22 Ultra or I really, or really need to get something lower? So 
you're gonna hear, I'm, I'm gonna answer you and you're gonna hear people be like, no, you're gonna, your phone's gonna break. Your phone's not gonna break. It's not gonna die. It's not gonna die quicker if you use a 65 watt charger. The, the, the technology between the charger and your phone is smart enough to know not to charge it at 65 watts. So you don't have to worry about it. Yes, you can use it. Would, should you keep it? I'd say just keep it unless you want the 45 watt charger. Both of them are probably gonna charge about the same anyway. Digital Death 187, is there any websites out there that have information on how to disable the GOS app? Curious, wanting to try to see the difference on the Z Fold 3. It's funny you ask that because I did, I, I haven't looked into it too much. But I do know that some people were seemingly able to disable it and they pay Genshin and their performance on Genshin after disabling GOS has been much better. Uh, but again, how do you do it? Not totally sure. Some people might say you can uninstall it through some apps from your computer, which sounds like a big hassle. I'll look into it and see if there's a way though. Last question comes from Romanoff and he says, uh, have you experienced any charging issues with your S22 Ultra? No, I, not that I noticed uh, any, so I'm gonna say no to that. And I didn't, if, if you guys are having charging issues, put it down in the comments for Romanoff. Thank you so much, guys. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below. Don't forget about our giveaway. It's linked down below. It's part of my 100,000 subscriber uh, giveaway right there. And then who's winning tonight's fight? Colby Covington or Jorge Masvidal? I'm gonna say Colby's gonna win. We'll see if I'm right. I'm almost always wrong when I predict these things on here. We'll see though. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and we'll see you down the road. Peace. What is going on, guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily, your source for daily tech news. Make sure you subscribe so you know what's going on in the world of tech. How is everyone doing tonight? Hopefully you're having a fantastic today. Today is actually my birthday. We're actually headed out to a really nice steakhouse downtown San Diego. I can't wait. Haven't had a really good steak in a long time. So I'm really, really looking, look, really looking forward to it. So uh, without further ado, we got a bunch of tech news stories and a bunch of questions. So let's just dive into the tech news so that I can go to my birthday dinner. So with that said, first story of the day is about the GOS app. Now we've been talking about it affecting the S line of phones from the S10, 20, 21, and 22 series of phones. What about the Note phones? Well, a little bit more information has come out about those and it doesn't seem to be affecting it because uh, Geekbench has announced that the Galaxy Note 10 and Galaxy Note 20 series don't have any throttling issues unlike S devices that have been affected because with GOS. So if you have one of the Note 10s or Note 20s, you shouldn't have to worry about GOS really throttling your performance with your apps slash games with it. Now, speaking again of GOS, the game optimization service, how do you disable it? I don't have a video for you. And if you want that, I have to make one, which shouldn't be that big a deal. So if you want one, make sure you really let me know. Let me know on Twitter, say, hey, Greg, make that video you said. Um, but I got some instructions from the guy, the man of the hour, Gary, Gary uh, said, I, cause I asked him, said, cause he, I know he turned it off. He said, download AdGuard, which is a free app, find game optimizing service, turn off everything except uh, AdGuard protection, delete GOS's app data, reboot your phone, turn on AdGuard VPN first, and now you can turn on data or Wi-Fi, and you're finished. Sounds like a lot to do, so if you wanna follow his instructions, you can. I haven't done it just, uh, I downloaded the app that this thus much, but other than that, I haven't actually done the steps to turn this off. And again, if you want me to make a video, you can, or you can follow his instructions and go through it yourself. But that's how you disable GOS on your current Galaxy S line phone. Apple has a big event in about two days, and you might wanna know what they're actually going to be announcing. Well, this is what the rumors are saying right now, what they'll be announcing. It's coming from Joshua Swingle via Mark Gurman via Power On, on what to expect from ne next week's Apple event which is this week's really. An Apple SE 5G, which is a really inexpensive uh, cheap phone with faster chipset and better cameras. An iPad Air with the same design with the A15 Bionic chip. 5G support and center stage, which is their, uh, their feature that allows you to get followed around with the camera doing a video call. At least one new Apple Silicon Mac, which is rumored to be the Mac Mini, it should be on Max, they're gonna call it Max Studio or something. That's the rumor. And then a possible wildcard announcement. Wildcard announcement, I can't imagine what that would be. 
I don't think they're gonna surprise us, but if they do, maybe it's gonna be those AR VR glasses they've been talking about that are rumored to be coming out next year. Who knows, we'll have to wait and see, but Tuesday is the day of the event. And our last story has to do with the exclusive colors for the Galaxy S22 phones and when are they going to be released? Because rumors are they were gonna be released very, very soon because we're in that time frame when they should be released, but it looks like we're getting some bad news. And I got this tweet from Marco. Marco said, and he reached out to me and Adam Matlock, also known as Tech Odyssey. Apparently Samsung just sent out a bunch of emails with further delays for the exclusive colors. And when you go to that Reddit post, people go in there and say that their, their, their release date has now vanished and it's showing, showing no release date. And some people are getting emails saying that it will be released very soon, like within, or at least they'll get an announcement within 48 hours. But then there's other people saying that with their, their release date vanished, that their release dates have been pushed back and delayed. So it sounds like, it could be a mixture of both, but ultimately it sounds like the special colors for the Galaxy S22 for the majority of folks has been delayed. This is unfortunate. It's sad. I know a lot of people are looking forward to getting their phones, their ex especially these exclusive colors. The majority of people, I know some, some people have trickled out and got their phones already in th throughout the world, but it's unfortunate. And as the story develops, I will definitely let you guys know. And you guys will probably let me know because you've had the pre-order for these exclusive colors. There you guys go. That is your news for today. Your question of the day is, out of those exclusive colors, which one do you think looked the best, let me know in the comments down below. I think if I was gonna have chosen one, I probably would have chose the blue one, like that f sky blue, whatever they called it. That's the one I'd probably choose. Let me know about you guys in the comments down below. With that said, let's get into the Q&A portion of the video and drop that beam. Dave says, hey Greg, what do you think will launch their Fold first? Google or Samsung, will it make a difference in sales? Also, do you think it's a good idea to get a Pixel 4 for 199 for a backup phone? I don't have much money to spend. Yeah, I think that's a great phone to grab as a backup phone. Um, that's not a bad phone at all. So yes, I would say yes, grab that. And then for the Pixel Notepad or the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4, Z Fold 4 should launch first and then the Pixel folding phone slash notepad, whatever they end up calling it, is supposed to launch sometime in October. But will it make a difference? I don't really think so, because I, I the, the market for that is potentially so big, but right now it's kind of small. So I think I think they'll be fine. I think people that are gonna buy the Samsung phone were already gonna buy the Samsung phone. And Google, in the grand scheme of things, doesn't sell that many phones in general, so I don't think it'll affect many things. Paulson says, do I have to worry about anything? Do I have to do something to get it more protected. He's talking about what happened, we talked about yesterday with the breach and the hack, the cyber attack on Samsung. Right now, I'd say no, I don't think there's anything you could probably do or be affected by in the grand scheme of things. It's really gonna be I, probably if you lost your phone, someone stole your phone and had it and it was a hacker and they knew what to do, that's when things would probably come into play. Right now, I, I would say you're probably okay though. Shajil says, I said, what tablet will you upgrade your son to? So. I actually bought him the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus. I'm gonna trade, I'm trading in his Tab S6, get a little bit of trade in on that, and then um, get some good cash back with the credit card. So I'm pretty confident with that. If it's too big, I'll just return it. Right now his tablet's like 10.5 inches. So Tab S8 Plus for the win. Jerome Gold says, how can you find the GOS app on your phone? I have the Note 20 Ultra. So obviously you can find it with that app that I talked about, the AdGuard app. If you go through the the, the walkthrough in that, you'll see, the, see it in that app. Troy Quentin says, I used your advice and did the power up reboot and deleted the cache. How often is that recommended? As I did it about a week ago, but how seeing my battery back to draining quicker with minimal use on the S22 Ultra. That was really just, uh, some people said it worked, some people said whatever. It's not an ultimate, ultimate fix for your phone. You can do it probably as much as you want. It's not really gonna affect anything, but in the grand scheme of things, it's definitely not a ultimate, this is gonna fix everything. I was just going by what a few people said on that Reddit post. Also, I wanna thank Tyler Unger for becoming a new Patreon supporter. Thank you so much, Tyler. Uh, great to have you aboard. If you wanna be a Patreon supporter or a member of this YouTube channel, you'll see a join button down below. You can click on that. That supports ultimately what I do and it gives you special badges. And then Patreon gets your name, especially if you join the $5 and up plan, it gets your name as one of the names that I use uh, as a special thanks 
when I do my question and answer portion of the video. So thank you so much, guys. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below with the word question. And I'll see you down the road. Peace.